Welcome back to Thick Riff Thursday. Today is a very special episode because this is the first guest Thick Riff Thursday episode, and I'm stoked about it. We've got Mike Semeski on this week. You may know him from his work with Intervals, The Heart Machine, and Raunchy. He's an amazing vocalist, and I'm so excited to have him on this week. So the plan is we are going to write a thick riff for him to write vocals to, and then we're going to send it to him. He's going to write vocals for it. He's going to send it back with the stems. We're going to listen to it. And then we're going to talk to him about it and it's going to be really fun and I'm really excited about it. Let's jump into it. First Thick Riff Thursday guest episode. Let's go. I had a cool idea that I recorded a voice memo of the other day. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't think I've ever... First of all, I don't think I've ever played this guitar on a Thick Riff Thursday episode, and I don't think I've ever played any of my eight strings as eight string guitars. Like typically I'm playing my eight strings as seven strings, and then I've got that lower eight string if I want it. But I don't think I've ever played any of my guitars in F sharp standard, just straight up F sharp standard. <laughs> It's beefy, dude. This is sick. You never really think about how your style is influenced by the tunings that you play in, but like this just, it's gonna force me to play very different from how I usually play. Like I usually do a lot of like big open chords and like drop seven string tunings, but um, I can't rely on that this time. I have to actually write something cool and a standard tuning. So the idea that I had was the chorus is kind of this like dark droning type thing where the chord changes very slowly. And I think it could have a really, really cool vibe. A lot of the stuff Mike has been doing lately is heavier and um, I really like it. Like he's a really talented vocalist and he can do a lot of different styles. So yeah, let's see, let's see what we can come up with. Something like that, man. I'm gonna hit record and I'm gonna kind of improvise this because it's not really fleshed out yet. And I'm just gonna see what I record, you know? Sometimes you just gotta improvise a riff. You have like a little little piece of an idea that you haven't fleshed out yet. So sometimes I like to just hit record and see what comes out post-chorus idea. So the post-chorus idea is this. That's also not fleshed out. That's kind of like improvised too. Let's just go for it. Let's see what ha let's see what comes out. Okay, yeah, I, I definitely changed time signatures in there. I, I kind of do want this to just conform to like a standard eight bar repetition. So I don't really want to change time signatures because I, I want it to be, I'm not saying odd time signatures make it less open to vocals, but I the, the vibe I'm kind of going for is a little more straightforward and I do want it to be very open for vocal writing. So... See if we can get this into like an eight bar phrase. Oh, I dropped my pick. I dropped my pick, but I, I still got the I still got the takeout. That's that's what I wanted to do. Not drop my pick. The, the riff is what I wanted to do. <laughs> and then maybe I could do like a little eighth note anticipation on the next repetition. So like. Uh, 
And then it really only changes the rhythm for like the first bar. Oh, maybe not. Two, three, four, let's see. And then it goes back to how it was. Yeah, it just changes it a little bit. I, I think that's cool, actually. Coming out of this chorus, I, I definitely wanna do um, a tail end to get us out of that and into a new riff. But I, I, I have a pretty good idea for what I want the next riff to be. Yeah, that's cool. That's a cool riff. Damn, I missed playing an F sharp standard. This is beefy, dude. Okay, let's move on to drums now. Now I don't know what I want the kick pattern to be because I don't want it to be like annoying if it's like every hit on the guitar. Maybe I could give it like a slower feeling by like not hitting the kick every time the guitar hits. pretty good i liked how that came out it's just like that that's just a different kind of heavy you know what i mean it's a different kind of heavy where it's like it's like sludgy it's like slow and like like it's melodic but it's 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 just like dark it's dark i love that <laughs> the symbol catch there that was awesome okay i think up until halfway through the third bar it's the same so let's reprogram the kicks and the symbols oh the snare can stay though snare can stay let's just get rid of the kicks okay Yeah, and after that point, it's the same. Cool, yeah. This is gonna be massive, dude. This is gonna be absolutely massive. <laughs> that chug part is gross like it's just again it's a different type of heavy i feel like you guys know what i mean it's it's just like it's like you know it's it's hard to describe i'm not sure how let me know in the comments how you guys like categorize this kind of thing but it, to, to me it's like slow it's like sludgy it's like it's dark i don't know maybe i'm overreacting <laughs> but but to me this is like so heavy got Maybe. Ah, missed the floor, Tom. Oh, no, I didn't. Just for some reason. This keyboard, for some reason, man, it just... Like, sometimes you'll hit a, a note, and it'll be like, Oh, you f slammed that. Are you sure? Let's put the velocity at three, just in case you didn't mean to hit that. It's like, nah, dude, I meant that sh Cut the guitars a little early. Yeah, just to just to make that like that post chorus riff hit. So this was this was halftime. The the chorus I was doing at halftime. I think I should do snare on snare on two and four on that. Was good i know I, I make a lot of faces when i program drums i started realizing that where i'm like i'm like watching myself program drums and i'm like yo why am i making that face <laughs> where's my stack
Hello. There it is. Okay. All right. I think I want to put bass in now. I'm going to use Euro bass three for this. Make sure I get that very consistent, beefy low end. Nailed that. Nailed the programming on that. See, again, look, look at this. I definitely, that's not, I did not hit that at two velocity. Come on. You know better than that. I'll get that much to get us started. Yeah, and it's just two, two chugs and then it repeats. Push that one back a 16th note. Okay, I think that's right then. This note and this note these higher notes need to be hammer-ons. So let's get an articulation set, my Euro bass articulations, and then put it on. Let's mute the guitar and make sure those are right. These need to be harder because they're getting drowned out now that they're hammer-ons. That one, okay, that felt good. That felt good. Hell yeah. Okay, next repetition, what if I harmonize it? That was a good one. Let's see if there are any like nice production layers we can do in the chorus. What if I make the last three notes of the spacey lead that, and then it kind of gets us into Phrygian dominant a little better. And we can just fade that out. Yeah, that's sick. That's sick, I'm happy with that. I like the stack. The stack was the right move. It, it makes it groovier. Okay, time to send this over to Mike. Let's do it. The vocals is in. That's right, DJ Khaled, the vocals is in. So before we do the final reveal, we're gonna talk to Mike. We're gonna talk about his workflow, his recording process, and a bunch of other stuff. So here's my conversation with Mike Semeski. Tell me a little bit about like what your, your, your workflow was like. And you told me a little bit about it the first time we talked. Um, yeah. About kind of what your like creative process is like, but I would love to hear yeah, uh, a little more about it. Yeah. So typically what happens is I'll get an instrumental demo pre-production, um, something that sounds, you know, the levels are good enough and production quality is good enough that I can get a feel for what they're going for. Yeah. Um, but and so like with uh, the song that we worked on, the production was already phenomenal. And you had all these like post-production effects and stuff on there. And like that, was it a filter effect on the guitar at the beginning? There was something like kind of gainy about it. Yeah. Maybe 
Okay, is that what it I, was? I, I did a yeah, I did a couple things. I mean, I did like a lo-fi kind of guitar track, yes, and then I I did a like an, a, yeah. a little like bass layer, doing some like low end hits and stuff like that. Wait, there's bass at the beginning? There is bass at the beginning. I I kind of I took out a lot of the low end from it, um, but it's actually my wife's <sighs> jazz bass, my her Fender jazz bass, and I I made it like all like high endy and like kind of oh, like okay. less low end. Okay. But I, I that note is still there, so it gives you a little bit more like musical context you know oh that's awesome yeah wait your wife plays bass she does yeah she's not in the music space professionally so she it's you know it's not something that uh she always has time for but we do we do jam from time to time and yeah she plays bass she she sings she plays guitar so she's she's super super talented damn yeah wow all these all around musicians under (laughs) one roof that's amazing yeah dude i had no idea that there was a, a fender uh that there was bass in there at all i actually have a jazz bass back here i have an old fender jazz bass the nice. black one there on the wall so anyway like that that production quality was already like i i instantly knew the vibe that you were going for mm-hmm. you know like levels were set post-production effects and stuff like that layering there was already some layers in there that were really cool so um and you left a lot of space which was really nice sometimes uh i get an instrumental where like the confines where I'm supposed to find space for my vocals to be are, are very, very small, very rigid, you know, and, totally. and you had like a nice open chord progression, you know, with like kind of a melody in there with like some lead layers and stuff, but not so much so that like it instantly ruled out like, you know, like a handful of notes, you know, that, right. uh, you know, from the key that I wouldn't be able to use. So my process uh, really just starts with like listening through the instrumental and um, trying to internalize the parts. I typically put like little markers in my session when it's a full song. It really helps. Yeah. Um, you know, we were just doing a pre-chorus and chorus. Um but just so I can see like the structure and have the visual aid, I'm very much a visual learner. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that kind of helps. Um, it already feels like it's like the thought has started, you know, like that pre-chorus already sounds like, you know, it's it's the end of a sentence that's already begun and yeah. it's it's ready for that climactic chorus. And so I had to try and come up with something that like already felt like it was you know in the in the middle of a thought you know which which wasn't a problem that like it was it was kind of nice actually not having to write something beforehand you know that would like perfectly set the stage for it yeah for sure i think that like writing a verse before pre-chorus and a pre-chorus before a chorus for me everyone has their own process i suppose but for me, context is really important for writing. And I really try to avoid a lot of repetition in the vibe of parts in consecutive order. Like I don't wanna have like a pre-chorus where it's a bunch of really long sustained notes leading into a chorus with a bunch of really long sustained notes. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I think each chord in the pre-chorus, there was like a sort of call response, you know, question answer for like the four chords. It's like four chords, right? Mm -hmm. It's based around four chords, right? Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. something like that. It's it's not, it's it's a pretty slow like harmonic rhythm. Yeah, yeah, like you said, my goal was to make it really open. So I, it was like pretty slow. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's interesting because I'm not a vocalist, so I don't, I don't, ever really write vocals sometimes i'll have vocal melody so if i work with somebody i've got a melody idea that we can work on but i don't really write vocals so i you know for me it makes total sense to start with the chorus of a song if i'm like starting a new project and i'm writing something right out of the gate it totally makes sense for me to be like okay this is huge and epic and it's like big and open this is a this is a perfect chorus and then kind of just like work backwards from there i've I found that that like that helps me craft an entire song better than just starting yeah. at the beginning yeah yeah so i mean here's a question for you um would you say that your choruses are not more simplistic 
than the rest of the song, the other sections of the song, but is it just like a little more to the point? It's steering me if I were to, you know, write a song from the ground up, you know, from the instrumentation to vocals, I could totally see that being a, a useful approach. I think I think that could be what happens typically is is the chorus does tend to be a little more simplistic and then the parts get a little more complicated and a little more progressive yeah. and a little more, you know, like, yeah. Uh, intricate later on, even, even the, yeah. even this, this project that we were doing, like it yeah. was a very simple chorus. And then the chorus ends and immediately I'm doing a more, a way more riffy thing. Yeah uh oh, right totally. afterwards um and it just it just felt like it worked yeah for sure yeah it's kind of like this is what a lot of other sections of the song are going to be building up to so um yeah i can totally see that that approach we got a pup in the background <laughs> yeah he's oh. <laughs> sorry i had to run away and and stop him from tearing up the rug choosing the <laughs> the <laughs> the worst time to be destructive right now. But oh, man. is is he a, a like a full on studio dog? Does does he just like yeah. sleep there while you do your thing? And... Yeah, yeah, he does. I have I have two actually. I have two golden retrievers. Oh. One, uh, oh. she's best temperament. Yeah, yeah, they're the best. She's uh, our our older one. She's four years old. She's always just chilling. She's not yeah a puppy anymore at all but uh the other guy he's about a year old and he's, oh yeah <laughs> yeah he so gets, he's got energy he, he's got energy and he gets into stuff sometimes so i've got mine back here yeah as you yeah, can see studio dog just this spotted lump on the couch right back there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. what's what's his, his or her name gunter gunter yeah nice. yeah named after um uh the the ice king's penguin in um adventure time no but he is turning seven um christmas eve oh, so okay. his his energy it's still there um but yeah it's not like constant like he needs to burn it you know more yeah. often than not like during the day but i got him at eight weeks old he is so used to being around really loud noises and yeah he yeah. can sleep straight through a, a four-hour screaming session yeah, and just awesome. you know he can <laughs> yeah. tune me out pretty well same with mine man same with mine yeah. we get we also got them at both of them at eight weeks old so they've been oh yeah around yeah. the the low tuned guitars for a long time i but, wonder if that helps them sleep the low <laughs> the low tuned guitars i, I mean it feels like they're in the womb again yeah right <laughs> yeah i mean Those maybe they're just so used to it now that maybe it just like it chills them out it, it, it gives them some like yeah. some peace of mind to know that we're just mm hanging out anyway back to like the song structure stuff that's so interesting to hear that it's like you kind of build off of a, a core section and and man totally like straight into a really playful rhythmic thing um in that following post-chorus section i i definitely started with that pre-chorus i want to say that i had like two ideas and uh ended up sticking with like a, a the second idea um yeah. uh Generally, what I do with a melody idea is I'll I give it the classic just like sleep on it test mm -hmm. where I'll work on it, you know, for a little while and, you know, I'll record like a scratch idea. No particular lyrics. It's usually just a bunch of like unintelligible gibberish, <laughs> um, uh, but just to like get a reference for like what I'm going for. Um, cause it always sounds different when you're listening back versus how it sounds in your head. So I did a scratch take, I think of that first pre-chorus, maybe mess around with the chorus a little bit, but just like kind of wanted to wait to like invest like time in that melody until I had like a nice concrete pre-chorus draft, you know, ready mm -hmm. to go. Yeah. And so I remember sleeping on it one night and waking up the next day and like pulling it up. And I was like, yeah, yeah, this is going to be awesome. And then I listened to the instrumental cause I don't listen to the scratch take when I listen to it the following day. Uh, okay. You know, I have it in there. It's saved in there, but I mute it because I want to make sure that I can remember it. Right. And yeah. couldn't remember it. So it didn't pass the test. So I was like, OK, yeah. all right, back to the drawing board. Here we go. And then came up with what you hear now. What did you think of that idea that like delay? Did you hear like that filter sort of telephone affected delay that I added in there? I don't think uh, I I don't think I did. Is that in the in the mix that I sent? Let me pull it up real quick. 
Yes, I I did I did notice that I did notice that when I was yeah when I when I was listening to it yeah okay that's, does that do awesome. anything for you no I I love that I love that you that, do like that, that oh okay that, cool. yeah that fills the space perfectly like that was like part of the package of the melody that I was hearing in my head mm-hmm. and I can't remember if I programmed that in MIDI or not I don't think I did actually I think it would have been uh, weird to hear in MIDI. But when you hear it in context as a production thing, it Mm -hmm. makes perfect sense. And it's it's one of those things uh, in the vocal part that I feel like, you know, is is a very recognizable thing. It stands out. And it's one of those things that if you're singing along to the track, you would totally like want to sing that part, too. You know? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's very rare that I come up with something where I'm like, okay, there's a production thing I want to do. Yeah. It's like. A crucial it feels to me like a crucial part of the melody like i don't think the chorus would be the same without it i'm just like in love with that part i don't know why how did you feel about like listening to i i what okay two questions i guess two-part question here like how did you feel about the melodies as i programmed them right and i sent them to you uh and what virtual instrument did you use for reference so i just listened to it as the default like logic piano because i felt like i felt like i in my brain i can just be like okay i know what this is going to sound like i know that if it's Uh just like a deep like a stock piano sound with like midi that like is like maxed out velocity and it's just like all even and it's just like a programmed melody i i can i can like know that it's gonna sound completely different uh, at the yeah. end so yeah i i listened to it as the just a default piano yeah i i thought the melody and the harmonies because you you sent along with you sent a ton yeah. of layers of of harmonies as i think separate way or separate midi files yeah i i remember hearing it and thinking that it just like fit it, it just like sat there in the in yeah. the instrumental track so well and that even it, the clunky it, piano yeah yeah even was, even the clunky piano like it, it yeah. just made it made so much sense musically okay um, okay okay and it, it didn't feel like it was stepping on anything it wasn't like okay. going anywhere that i felt like it would be uncomfortable hearing you know cool. so it made me really excited to hear what it would sound like with you know yeah. your vocals actually tracked on it i love how it turned out obviously but i'm glad that uh you were able to use your imagination enough like knowing that the clunky piano was not the final product yeah and that like yeah like as boring as just like a a piano with zero humanity in it can sound Mm -hmm. you you were able to use your imagination and and just listen to it for what it was and just kind of like yeah i mean it's an interesting it's an interesting way of writing too because like you can say like, oh, okay, if it sounds this good with the the stock Logic piano sound, yeah, then it's gonna sound really good with you know real yeah. instruments, real real takes. So I mean, yeah, I I thought about changing it, maybe making it a synth, just like okay. a saw synth or something, or like even oh, yeah. like a a choir sample pack or something, just to hear how it yeah. sound like as you know vocals, but. I was like, at that at that point, I'm gonna go down the rabbit hole of trying to make this MIDI sound yeah. like a final product when it's yeah. not even trying to be that. It's just to have the right. idea there, and you know, right, right, base the 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 final product on. So, yeah, I just I stuck with the the Logic piano, and I was like, awesome, that yeah. sounds great. Because this is like the process that I use with mm-hmm. like anyone that I'm writing for, whether it's you know, my own project and I'm sending it to bandmates or whatever, or yeah. I'm sending it to a client who I'm doing session work for, you know? Yeah. And so I, you know, I'm, I'm just curious, you know, like how the MIDI sat with you, if you like really, really had to like use your imagination or if it was like, okay, I'm getting a, a pretty decent sense for like what he's going for here. It's interesting to hear that, like you sort of like reference from memory, just like, the the tone and range of my voice just just like it's gonna sound kind of like this yeah you know if if he sounded like this on this song it's gonna probably sound something in this ballpark yeah it's it's an interesting way i think like your your workflow is is interesting to me because 
all the vocalists I've worked with so far, just remotely, it really is just like I send the instrumental their way and yeah. they send back a bounce with their vocals on it. And they're like, hey, do you right. like this? Um, and we kind of just yeah. collaborate that way. So this was like very involved and I, it felt like I had cool. a, a, a really uh, it was nice to to have that like creative input at specific yeah. points in the process, you yeah, know, before yeah. things were actually recorded. Oh, dude, awesome! No, I'm I'm glad you felt that way. And honestly, I was expecting you to like shift a bunch of stuff around, and which I'm totally like open to. Like, I, man, when I send like a rough draft to people, like. I definitely encourage if you hear like something different, you know, yeah. like by all means, like, you know, like send, send a revision, you know, with like a change in the note choice or, or like a, an additional harmony or uh, mm -hmm. if you want to change something rhythmically or something, but um, uh, no, I'm, I'm stoked that you liked it, you know, from, you know, as is when, when I sent you like uh, the MIDI draft and stuff and yeah. And, and like you were saying, when you get files from other vocalists where it's just like you have no idea going into that first listen, you have no idea what you're about to hear outside of maybe like lyrics if they send you lyrics in advance. I imagine like there's some like maybe not every time, but like some adjustment and like getting used to and internalizing that. Yeah. You have, might take place yeah there's there's a little bit of like i work with people that i know i can trust and that i okay. like i know that you know they're gonna send me a quality product but there is a little bit of like oh man it, it sucks to have to ask for this but can you change right. the melody a little bit on this part i know you already yeah. tracked it i know it's already pretty much done on your end mm -hmm. um but yeah it feels like you know like if the, if there was something with the melody that i wanted to change um yeah then you know it's a it's a little bit like oh sorry man i know this is kind of a pain but can you yeah please yeah. change this up a little bit and um yeah i think i think your process eliminates a lot of that did you here's a question for you did you end up mixing the vocals do you have like a cut of that i don't have I can... the vocals mixed yet but i did want to oh, do okay. that for the end of the video to have the the final playthrough of the mm. the track that we did yeah. um i i will take your your stems and, and put them in there i'm curious to hear the way that your approach to to mixing and stuff and and mm -hmm. it's a lot of tracks you know you know everyone's approach is a little bit different um but with with metal specifically where vocals are like competing with a lot of layers yeah um of instrumentation and a lot of volume i think that like the the amount of layers that you add to a lead vocal and to your harmonies i think make it a little easier to tell like what is a verse section what is a pre-chorus and what is a chorus section yeah what is a bridge section and so on totally you know what i mean to fill out space and yeah. so like you know when you start with a verse and like you know uh well i guess we started with a pre-chorus it's not super dense you know layering wise yeah it can be because it is down pretty minimalist yeah, yeah yeah it's stripped down instrumentally and so you know the vocals you know um were sort of uh planned accordingly and so but the chorus is very much fanned out because yeah. the the lead vocals are triple tracked yeah um, yeah no and it, it 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 cuts through really well too i i mean i i feel cool. like in in this genre it's like essential to do that much yeah. layering because yeah. you know you you get to the chorus of a song and you're competing the vocals are competing with like quad tracked eight string rhythm guitars and yeah. like super low bass a bunch of drum yeah. cymbals in the high end and it's totally. just like competition everywhere sonically so having that amount of layers and yeah. especially a chorus uh is like essential and it, yeah 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 what you track sounds great um cool. and it it was it's really nice to to have somebody with that production knowledge because i do do a, a good amount of mixes for clients that um may not just have that experience like they yeah. they've never had the experience of going to um like a real studio and and you know learning yeah. what to 
what to track and what not to track. And they don't realize that yeah. their favorite records, the way the reason they sound like that is because there's like 10 vocal tracks happening at the same time, yeah. you know? Totally, totally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. More often than not, it just gets buried, mm -hmm. you know, uh, or, or, or just like you said, it takes a lot of work, you know, whether you're EQing, you know, yeah. the guitars, you know, to try and compensate for the lack of layering or yeah. what have you. Yeah, um, yeah, totally. Yeah. And, and doing stereo tricks to make it sound wide yeah, and yeah. doing things True. like that. It's 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 so much easier when you have really tight vocals yeah. like the ones you sent. And and you you mentioned you do like revoice, you do like some vocal line stuff oh, too. Yeah. So you it's all like re matched up. Pro. Revoice Pro. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh man, that's a that's a lifesaver, isn't it? That Revoice Pro is oh my god. And and the newest version is just like I've been using those Synchro Arts products like mm -hmm. since they were just like on Vocaline. Yeah. I can't even remember which Vocaline model I was using, but I don't know if you've used Vocaline, but it's just like it used to be, okay, you know. Yeah. Just like lead and dub, you know, and mm -hmm. you so you are it is like painstaking and painstakingly slow that process, you know, yeah. of aligning your vocals because you have to kind of do it line by line. Mm -hmm. Um and not to mention the fact that like the older versions didn't have the new more sophisticated um smart alignment that like algorithm or whatever it is that they're using to account for breaths you know like it can detect breaths and so i remove all of the breaths from my double my triple from all my harmonies i leave okay, nice. one breath and even those breaths um in my lead vocal i duck those easily like at minimum like 8 db no oh, okay um yeah. you know depending on the breath and yeah and yeah the part um just because like we have to compress the shit out of our vocals for them to really cut yeah and you don't want to hear <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean <laughs> yeah yeah like, like gasping for air before a line i <laughs> exactly. mean like sometimes as like an effect it can be cool if it's like you know in mm -hmm. in the right spot but like typically sure. in, a, in a main thing it's not like no, you want to be hearing that all the time. No. Yeah. I, I haven't been, I I've been using vocal line. I can't, I don't remember what okay. version. Okay. Yeah. I, I haven't tried out revoice yet, but, okay. um, yeah, it sounds like I need to, but I mean, like I used to do all of that game changer. I used to do all that completely manually lining everything oh, up yeah. manually. And it just, I mean, like, it's, oh, it's brutal. Yeah. Vocal line has, has shaved hours, hours yeah. off my totally my workflow revoice is also awesome because you can do like infinite tracks at once oh man yeah that that is what sold me yeah you, you can do like however like i was able to like layer or i'm sorry i was able to align i i want to say like all 10 tracks like at the same time you know nice. for that chorus and i will say that that melodyne the newest melodyne um melodyne studio five mm -hmm. um is also like if you don't uh get revoice pro melodyne um five i feel like in terms of time warp mm -hmm. time because melodyne's used for all kinds of things right you know yeah. people tune their guitars you know with melodyne and stuff yeah. but like the the time warp feature for vocals within melodyne five studio at least um really really preserves like the human integrity of your take um, so awesome. like stretching like your double, like to align it with the lead or something, yeah. you know, like to, all the tuning aside, just like to get it to line up and like end at the same time. It's so much easier with the newer versions of Melodyne. Oh, awesome. Um, yeah. So, yeah, those are worth looking into as well. Yeah, I, um, I haven't I haven't checked that out much. I, I, I do use Melodyne, but I only really use it for tuning. Um, mm -hmm. typically yeah, the just tuning's one great, too. Time. Yeah. yeah, I used to work at a, a studio back when I lived in Texas and um, I did I did so much editing there, like my editing chops. That's where I got all of it. So <laughs> I was just like stuck doing a bunch of edits as a as an assistant engineer. But yeah, Melodyne. And I think something that not a lot of people realize is that like Melodyne in combination with like auto tune can be like super, super helpful. Like I used to yeah, tune yeah. just straight up into auto tune. So I would be like hearing yeah. auto tune from Melodyne. And I was like, if it sounds good, it's good. Yeah. Oh man. There's, there's so many misconceptions about like pitch correction. Totally. Um, and so, um, auto tune 
I, I know that it's gotten more advanced. The one thing that I just, I don't use auto-tune because um, of, I think it sounds amazing over certain genres, especially, mm -hmm. um, and certain like styles um, of vocals. But like the reason that I don't use it is I have a really breathy and raspy sound and auto-tune just doesn't like that. It, and 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 it creates insane artifacts and i end up real like like the robotic sound that you hear from like a hard auto-tuned yep. vocalist like it sounds like that but tenfold oh, with yeah. my voice just because like oh my god I, I i always reference like post malone because like you know his stuff is clearly auto-tuned but it's a stylistic thing yeah um you know what i mean like he's got a great voice naturally he doesn't mm -hmm. like need it you know right um but like it's a stylistic thing um people expect that in pop a lot of the time yeah exactly. but when you listen to his vibrato that like 16th note tremolo vibrato that he his is vibrato so, is crazy so good at crazy when you listen to that it's so interesting how like the transients are like so flattened uh -huh. and you hear and but you hear like artifacts of the air behind you know like the pitch just kind of pulsating yeah 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 it's like it's like a vibrato it's like a vibrato more so in like volume than it is yeah. with pitch it's like it's but I know, it's so fascinating to me yeah. like how that sounds and people like listen to that and it's just like that is so not human yeah that's like the yeah. one of the more inhuman things that like is created by auto-tune mm -hmm. you know what i mean like yep. flattened peaks and valleys of a vibrato mm-hmm flattened like this but you're hearing like the transient like uh, yeah yeah like, no, it, like it, pulsating it, of that waveform oh my god it sounds yeah. so weird but it's, it's i think it's cool it's uh, no it's super interesting you're hearing all the characteristics of vibrato except the pitch which yeah, is the, yes which is that's super a good way to put it yeah that's a good way to put it yeah exactly. yeah it's, exactly. it's really cool and it's it's become part of his sound and and mm -hmm. and part of the sound of the genre too i hear a lot of other mm -hmm. people do it and like yeah. as far as i know it started with him that's the first time i heard it mm -hmm. but um yeah, yeah it's just it's just one of those cool production things that like made its yeah. way into the into the arena just like yeah. t-pain made auto-tune and like right a, a part of auto-tune as an effect part of right. uh pop music you know, back then it's totally, it's, it's and cool. his voice is insane. His voice is incredible. Oh my God. I know. So good. So good. Oh my yeah. God. Hearing it without auto tune. I mean, everything that I've heard is definitely like pitch corrected yeah. or at least whatever needed to be pitch corrected, you right. know, was, um, but it's not hard tuned mm -hmm. and oh my God, I, I heard that for the first time T pains, like one of his, like, just, just, you know, like random live singles. Thing. And I was like, I've been missing like so many different shades and colors of this person's voice yeah. listening to his old stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, totally. Ah, yeah. I want to hear his old records. Just like, like take the hundred percent auto tune and like bring it down to like 20. Yeah. I don't know. It would Something. be interesting. It would be interesting to hear that because I, I wonder, and I, I, I'm I'm sure he does, but like performing, I'm sure he performs differently when he knows it's going to have the auto tune effect on it, as opposed mm. to oh, when it's just going to be like pitch corrected, like a light. I didn't think of that. Yeah, like that. yeah. It would be interesting to hear. That's true. The different ways he would perform it, but also yeah. hear his old songs performed. Yeah. Without auto tune. That's interesting. It's also interesting to think about how auto tune is such a part of pop music or not. When I say auto tune, I mean like pitch correction and like, okay, yeah. you know, making everything sound perfect. But like in yeah. pop music, it's interesting to, to hear people's reaction to something that hasn't been tuned mm -hmm. because they're like, why does it sound like that? Because like most right. people are just used to hearing right everything like, zero sense. perfectly tuned yeah yeah exactly yeah. yeah exactly <laughs> like like there's a there's an adele record or i don't know how much of her stuff i'm not like super familiar with her stuff but there's um mm -hmm. an adele song that i remember somebody talking about that 
doesn't have pitch correction on it and she does a little run in there and it's like a little bit it's a little bit wrong and that's cool it sounds good it's but yeah. it's a it's a it's not pitch corrected yeah and, and like seeing people's reaction being like what was that <laughs> you know like <laughs> it's like like just you know it's a, it's like a little bit flat and people are like well yeah. you know just because people are just yeah. so so used to hearing everything with pitch correction on it but i i, I want to thank you for for coming on and, and doing this project totally. with me it was it was so much fun i'm, I'm i've been yeah, a big like, fan of your your work for a long time man i'm a fan of yours as well dude so yeah i'm glad we can make this happen yeah I, I appreciate it man yeah. you have a good rest of your day and we'll uh we'll talk soon likewise man Take care. Again, huge thanks to Mike for coming on the show and laying down these amazing vocals on this Thick Riff Thursday riff. His band Raunchy has a new album that's currently being mixed and they're expecting a 2024 release. If you're interested in hiring Mike to do guest vocals on your track, you can reach out to him at MikeSemeskiMusic at gmail.com or on Instagram at MikeSemeski. By the way, next week's episode of Thick Riff Thursday is going to be a Christmas special which I'm super excited about. And it's going to include a Q&A. So please leave your questions down in the comments and I will answer them next week in the video. Lastly, if you're interested in watching me write the pre-chorus and add some post-production elements to this track, go check out my channel membership. I'll have a bonus Thick Riff Thursday episode and my members only videos. So please check that out if you're interested. All right, the moment you've been waiting for. Here is the final listen through of this week's The Griff Thursday Riff. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Thick Riff Thursday. I appreciate you. If you guys like my content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys next week. Peace. <laughs>